uh, about a, a boy. We'll, we'll call the boy Billy. Um, Billy was talking with his grandchild and telling him a story about his childhood. He recalled a man named Mr. Horrell who owned the mobile gas station and garage in a little town where he lived, and it was up the road just a few yards uh, from his own grandfather's garage, which was the Shell station. Remember the old mobile gas stations, the old Shell gas stations, and you come get your fuel there. There was a full-service pump, pump, pump. Anybody know what a full-service gas pump is? <laughs> you kids are going, I don't know what that is, right? And do you remember the stickers you could get from those gas stations? Well, anyway, the, the, so the little boy, he got uh, the stickers, and you could, back then, you put the stickers on your lunch pail, uh, and, and, and the more stickers you had, the more everybody liked it and all of that. And so he had lots of shell stickers on his lunch pail, but not very many mobile stickers on his lunch pail. And so he one day goes into Mr. Horrell's mobile station, and he asked him for some stickers. And Mr. Horrell was nice but firm, and he says, nope, can't give any to you. So at that, the little, little Billy got a little frustrated and got a little angry and kind of lost his cool there and said some things he probably shouldn't have said. And just really, the Bible, the message of grace is that he himself bore, is that God rejected his son. I don't think that's the, cost, the case at all. Jesus was literally actually quoting of the first line of Psalm Division 22, which is a prophecy that tells about the deep agony that the Messiah would feel on, on the cross, uh, the, the load of the, of the world's sin, your sin and mine, by the way. Jesus knew that he would be temporary, uh, temporarily separated from God the moment he took on to himself all the sins of the world. Why? Because God will not look upon sin. It's repugnant to him. In fact, if you go back to Habakkuk, chapter 1 verse 13 the bible says your eyes are too pure to look on evil you cannot tolerate the wrong now i believe this separation was the same separation that jesus was thinking about when he said in matthew chapter 26 verse uh, 39 when it says that jesus himself uh, uh bore he was talking about that cup please let this cup pass from me the cup that he was talking about was this time where he was going to take on the sins of the world that was going to separate him from his God. That's the cup that he's talking about there. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus could have called on legions of angels, but he loved us so much that he himself went to the cross, died on the cross because he loved us so much. Can I just tell you, when you face impossible stuff in your life, when you face the hardest times in your life, and when you have me come visit you in the hospital or in the hospice house, every time you're going to hear me say, how's things between you and Jesus? And without fail, people that know Christ will look up at me and say, we're good. Now, not always, because there's some that says, don't really know. Don't know if I'm saved or not. Never asked Christ in my heart. I said, boy, I'll tell you, you don't want to step into eternity without knowing Christ. But can I just tell you this? If you know Christ as your Savior, you think about that grace that he's given us to know, to be confident that when we leave this place, we'll go to a place called heaven. Tomorrow, uh, just afternoon, about 1 o'clock, I've got a, a, a graveside funeral due for a lady that a senior adult lady that was in my group over at First Baptist Lowell, and gosh, she was such a sweet lady and loved me and would cook lunch for me every once in a while just because she loved me. And When she left this world, she left this world knowing that she was not going to go uh, anywhere else other than to the arms of God. And guys, I just, I just believe in my heart that when you die here, you're not going to go meet St. Peter at the pearly gates. You're going to meet Jesus himself. I think that he himself is going to be waiting for us. I mean, yeah, the streets of gold, the pearls of gates, show me my mansion, all those different things. Listen, I get to heaven, I'm looking around, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for Jesus. And he's going to be easy to find because he's everywhere. There's just something 
about knowing that Jesus himself bore our sins in his body. Now, folks, you know that the physical pain had to have been awful. It's one of the worst deaths known to mankind. But the most difficult price that Jesus had to extend, had to do to extend grace to us, was this spiritual alienation or separation from God. It was a double death um, so that we might never have to experience separation from God. Jesus, listen, Jesus took the separation from God so that we'd never have to. Salvation is by grace. Secondly, grace is not only personal, it's purposeful purposeful go back to our verse i'll read it in context he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree why so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness now when you talk about grace most people just think about grace as it relates to your salvation about going from death uh, to life from going from separation to god to to this connection with God and being children of God and all of those, you're in the family of God. But there's more to it than just the salvation part of grace. Jesus didn't just die for your salvation. He also has a purpose for your life. I mean, what's the purpose of grace? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich how many of you know that no matter how much or how little money that you have if you know christ you become a rich person you become a rich person jesus became poor for our benefit by lovingly giving up his rights how many of you know that god's a sovereign god he's in control of everything so nobody could kill god unless god says okay i'm giving up my life for you on the cross he died on the cross the only way that jesus could have died on the cross was to allow himself to die. How many of you know that? Nobody can kill God. Nobody can destroy God. Nobody can make God anything other than what God wants to be because he's sovereign. And so when he died on that cross, his physical body died, he had the ability and the power to take the keys of death and hell and put them and come back to life again because he is God. That same God in all of his power and all of his authority says, I want you to be my child. So that when you go through difficult times, so when you feel poor in spirit, you might be able to say, yeah, I got some problems. Yes, things are not as like I'd like for them to be. Yes, I'm going through some difficult times. I mean, Paul, Scripture says that, that Paul prayed three times for this thorn in the flesh and God left it on him. Why? So that he could learn to depend on God more. And sometimes that's us as well. He made all who believe in him rich. I want you to watch this. In, in Psalm Division 119, I'm going to read about 11 verses here, so, so bear with me, uh, starting with uh, verse 137. The Bible says, Righteous are you, O Lord, and your laws are right. The statues you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy i almost wish i'd have just preached on this one psalm here because it's so full listen what you need to understand is so you look at god's word it gives you the ability to look at these things and how to live your life it gives you the ability to look at things when they're not the best and go i know that god will not leave me never forsake me i know that god's burdens are light my i know all the promises that god gives me watch this verse 139 my zeal, my zeal, my strength, my power, my authority, all the things that I think are good about me, my zeal wears me out for my enemies ignore your words. Watch this. Your promises have been thoroughly tested. Somebody say thoroughly tested. And your, and your servant, your servant loves them. Though I am lowly and despised, I don't forget your precepts. No matter how low I am, I know that your precepts will get me back to where I need to be. Verse 142, our righteousness is everlasting and your law is true. Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands are my delights. Why well, I can be delighted in the midst of awful things. Your statues are forever right. Give me understanding that I might live. 
I, I call with all my heart, answer me, O Lord, and I will obey your decrees. Now, verse 146, I call out to you, save me, and I will keep your statutes. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. Grace is personal. Grace is purposeful. It has a purpose in your life. It's to keep you from being distraught. It's to keep you from being nothing and to make you everything. It's to keep you from being poor and to make you rich. It's to keep you to make sure that you know that you'll never be alone in your life, that God will always be there with you. And then thirdly, grace is powerful. How many of you know grace is powerful? How many of you know grace is powerful? I mean, goodness gracious. Look at, the, look at the verse. Again, I'll read it in context here. He himself, talking about Jesus, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live to righteousness, live for righteousness. Now watch this. He ends this verse by saying, by his wounds, you have been healed. Aren't you glad it's not the opposite? By our, win, by our wounds, he's been healed. That wouldn't even make any sense at all, would it? Only God can heal you. Only God can take you from your lostness and make you into your saved person. Only God can do that. You don't have the power to do it. Now, maybe there's somebody here that has not heard me talk about this, but bear with me. Uh, you know, in this world right now, we're kind of in a me movement, aren't we? I guess we always have been. Everybody's always thinking about me and, and all that. I, I won't even get into the politics of all that, but frustrating i know it is for you but let's say let's say that i am let's say that i am cheryl like in my christianity i mean just barely below heaven i mean just just if i if i stood up my my head would pop into heaven that's how close i am to god right i mean let's just pretend that i'm that close to heaven okay and then let's pretend that we got we got johnny here and 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 listen my feet are my feet are burning right now right amen amen i look down i see mark right now i'm just kidding i'm just <laughs> just kidding i'm just kidding right so i cheryl's real close to heaven and i'm a long way from heaven can i just tell you the gulf between her and heaven is the same as the gulf between me and heaven we don't have the power we don't have the ability we don't have the resources we don't have the ability to get ourselves from where we are into heaven. We don't. It takes the power of God to get us there. That's salvation. Now, let's talk about after salvation. We're talking about by his wounds, you have been healed. Now, you've been healed in a spiritual sense because you've went from death to life. We know that. But what about the rest of us? What about this righteousness that leads to salvation. It's not talking about salvation from the standpoint of I, I was lost and now I'm found. It's talking about where God, the purpose that God, the, the place that God, the sanctification that God wants to have take place in your life to take you from the old creature to the new creature. How many of you, how many of you have heard me talk about the old Johnny? Okay, good. Um, three. All right, so... Listen, there's things that, that I used to do that God helped me to overcome. I got a long way to go, but I'm a long way from where I was. How about y'all? That's because of the power of the grace of God. God gave us the power inside of us and a person called the Holy Spirit to help us in our, in, in our sanctification. That just means to be made right in our righteousness of God. That's what it's talking about. So this grace is not only amazing for salvation, it's also amazing for this sanctification listen i know it's a churchy word but it just means to be made better to be made holy now um and this grace is amazing because it's it's not one size fits all it's 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 dedicated just for what you need it's amazing because it's purposeful it's amazing because it's powerful it's all we need it's amazing because it literally allows us to tap in to the power of god it's amazing because it's available to the entire world at one time at the same time it's amazing because of the change it performs in the lives of those who receive it now let me just tell you alone 
Abraham could not see past the little village that he was a part of. But with God, he could envision the promise of a whole new land for the children of God. Alone, Moses was confined to, to uh, uh, herding his father-in-law's sheep. But with God, he could envision the promise of, of, of taking the, the, the Israelites, the Hebrews, to freedom. Alone, David could not imagine being anything other than a simple shepherd. But with God, he became the king of Israel. Alone, Joshua felt the weight of leadership heavy on his shoulders, but with God, he led the people of Israel into the promised land. Alone, John the Baptist was an outcast and a misfit, but with God, he was a prophet and a visionary. Alone, Mary was insignificant and lowly, but with God, she gave birth to the greatest gift that God's ever given to earth. Alone, Peter hid in the high priest's courtyard, but with God, he stood in the temple and he preached. Alone, Paul was filled with pride and rage, but with God, thank God, he was filled with love and peace. Can I just tell you this morning, to be an effective child of God, we need to, we need to tap in to the power of Christ because it's there for us. It's not for any other reason but to allow us to be closer to God and be able to go through situations in our lives and even though things may be difficult, and even though things may not be what we want, God will put us in a place where we can be happy and find joy in our lives. Listen, I thank God for mountaintop experiences. I thank God for mountaintop experiences, don't you? Those times when God just shows up so big. You know, this morning I, I turn, I look around, and I see different people standing in different places over here, and I just think, hey, I say, thank God that we are able to worship. And thank God that we're able to just feel free to just not worry about what our, how our neighbor's worshiping or what they're doing, but they stand up, and even though they squeak out a note that sounds awful, they're praising God, and God hears it and thinks it's wonderful. Amen? <laughs> Y'all are all looking at each other going, yep, that's you. <laughs> but because of grace, he puts it, he puts your squeaky voice into something that's pleasant to God's ears. Don't ever be ashamed. I'll tell you this little, this little story. I'll, I'll, I'll be done. There was an older gentleman in our choir at Second Baptist Church in Conway way back in the 80s when I was um, on staff there. And God, big old tall guy. He, 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 wonderful old guy. He had a little bit of learning impairment. But the old boy loved to sing. And I was about the only one that could stand next to him because whenever he sang, he didn't get close to the note. I mean, it was barely in the same room, right? But our music minister, uh, Dennis, would allow him to sing in the choir, not because he could sing good, but because he loved to sing. Sometimes he sang a little too loud. Sometimes people around him couldn't find their note because of his. But I remember at his funeral that I think it was Brother Black that was doing that sermon. And he said, you know, right now, and he called him by name, and he said, uh, he's got a Bing Crosby voice or something like that. I don't remember, but he's got a wonderful voice now in heaven because God <laughs> takes everything that we do, as good or bad as it is, and he makes it into something amazing. In Philippians 3, 7, Paul said, Whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the case of Christ, for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I've lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Can I paraphrase? Once you find the grace of God, Nothing else measures up to it. Nothing else can come close to it. Once you find the grace of God and you understand how good it is, how amazing it is in your life, all the old things that you used to do instead of depending on grace seem like rubbish. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. One passage and we're done. So don't worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom 
and his righteousness, all these things will be given to you as well. Let's stand. Lord, how great is grace? It's what we lean on, Lord. It's what we depend on. It's what we dwell on in the good times. It's what we hang on to in the difficult times. Lord, I don't know. I'm fairly certain that in a crowd this size, we have people that are doing really well and people that aren't doing so well. And so I pray, Lord, that your grace would reach out to them both. And Lord, I pray for the ones that don't know you as Savior, Lord. I, I long for them to know the greatness of your grace in their life, Lord. So Lord, if there's one here or maybe a family or a couple or um, someone, Lord, that just needs to come down and spend some time at this altar realizing how good that grace is and knowing that even though maybe some difficult times are here, that they're going to be easier because of you. And maybe somebody comes up to praise you because of how you've worked with them in their life. I don't know, Lord, what you're trying to do this morning, but I pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, would feel free to move around us in a very special way, in a very unique way. Lord, I pray that this morning that you would do something special in one person's life. And Lord, we'll give you the praise in advance. In Christ's name, amen. You come now. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Come now.